the start of the final term here at the Western Oval. The Bulldogs by a point. A very important game to both sides. In a seesawing game. The Cats go forward through Gary Hocking. Just gets his boot to a bit. Cops are pushing the back. Now an umpire paying advantage as Simpson rings it in the direction of Ablett at the back. But a good mark in front by Steve Crediok. Gary, Gary Ablett has kicked three for the game. And Crediok's done very well. And this man, Doug Hawkins, game 322. Has he done well? 18 possessions. Grigich, top mark. Scott Winders on the bench. Interesting sight, so is Libba. Two Brownlow medalists on the bench for Footscray to start the uh, last quarter. Ball out of play at half forward. We'll have a throw in. Yeah, Grigich is starting uh, again at centre half forward. Stanfield in the ruck for Footscray. Bulldogs lead by a point. They're coming home with the breeze, and you'd think they'd win it, but uh, in every quarter, the team running into the breeze has outscored the opposition. West. Stanfield. Short pass is good to Cameron. Leon Cameron swings onto the left kick. Boom. Grant. Oh, good mark. Brilliant mark by Grant. Running back with the flight of the ball, but didn't wave it. Didn't take his eyes off it. It's a good kick by Cameron, too. Well played by Stanfield, too, to chip it around to square the ball up. Just a gentle nudge to give O'Reilly out of the contest. Well played by Grant. Well, psychological boost if he kicks this. It will be a seven-point break early in this final term. Out he goes for his fourth. Hooks it. Oh, he's missed. He had the right idea, Chris Grant. Well, it would have been his third, but he's missed. He's kicked two for the game. Two, four. Stephen O'Reilly for the Cats. Plenty of distance into the breeze. But they are going into the breeze for sure, Geelong. Another good mark to Grigich. And what a kick for McPherson. Unmarked inside centre half forward. Steve McPherson came off the bench in the third quarter and immediately got into the action. And he's had six possessions in that third term. It's untidy ma matching up there by Geelong, too, just lapsing in concentration. McPherson for his second goal. Way offline. Grant almost. And the ball off the hands and out of bounds in the forward pocket. Puts Gray by two points. They're locked together on the ladder. Big name for both clubs. Grigich. Ooh, he copped one across the mushy. The umpire said he interfered with Barnes going for that uh, ruck contest. Didn't look to be much in it. Barnes, who a dangerous kick. He finds O'Reilly. O'Reilly looking for McGrath. He's got him at half back. Now he can go over the top here to Tanner. Oh, he'll have to get rid of this quickly. Good hand bars. Very good because they were enormous pressure. Here's Lee Tudor. Well played too by Stephen Hocking to Shepard. The chip pass finds Handley. That's excellent play. He should be looking for Ablett. Kick it long now and he's one out. Here he is. Ablett, use of the body, pretty up, a magnificent mark, chipping across in front of the champ. Well, he's played superbly on uh, Gary Ablett. Six marks, 12 possessions, Steve Crediel. Here's Steve McPherson, playing his first senior game of the year. And how well he did that. Atkins back to McPherson. Super, what a pass to the half-forward line. And Colonia marks. Wide open forward line, he puts it out in front of Costa, who takes the mark and kicks the goal. He's had the job on McGrath all day, on the hockey, I should say. He's done it pretty well. Great setup here by experienced players, Atkins of McPherson. But well done to Steve Critter in that fullback gear. He just backed himself in against Ablett. And he set that up. They brought it all the way down the attacking side. Well played. The Bulldogs by eight points. A well well weighted kick that was too by Colin to allow Costa to run onto it with pace. Well, that's the one they wanted, the Bulldogs, in Dougie Hawkins. 322nd game. Can they win it for the champ? Barnes. He 
wins it. The quick kick was by Cameron. For the half forward line, they all fly. Beveridge chips it. And a good mark that was over the head of Grant. And a good mark taken by O'Reilly. Now, Stephen O'Reilly, centre half back area. He's only had two kicks. He's had his work cut out chasing Grant. He's held him to two goals. He brings it in towards half back. McGrath wide now which way will it bounce wills mcpherson hunter mcpherson's given them a lift here's beverage on center wing and mcpherson again for the third time in the movement well the way he's going the footscray fans would be thinking well why hasn't he been in the seniors all season steve mcpherson the umpire's going to make him take this kick again. And by time on. McPherson goes long to full forward. Punched down by O'Reilly from Grant. Stanfield! Kick smothered. Riccardi's back there. Peter Riccardi, hurried kick off the left. Couch caught behind. Now here's Paul Couch in the defensive 50. Breaks one tackle, breaks another one. He's taken it more than 10 metres defensively. McGrath. Across the ground goes McGrath. Out of bounds will do him here. Wills outnumbered. And the ball does go out. Andrew Wills would have been praying for that to go out. There was two foot scrape players against one Geelong. It's slightly towards Footscray's half forward line. Barnes tries to grab it out of the ruck contest. Wallace gets it to Atkins. Good play by Atkins and a clever kick. Now Richard Osman. He's a very long kick of a football. He'll go very, very close to this, Richard Osborne. Probably a little bit too far out, but he is a long kick. Oh, look at this! A top hit a cut back through the middle. A big kick by Osborne for his second. Huge kick. If he'd kicked like that in America, he'd have been playing Grinnell. Oh, what a goal. Well, he set himself up very well. That was terrifically clever play, too, by Atkins, who just... Took a couple of steps to straighten himself up and just passed that short one off to Osborne, who just floated beautifully, let go of that big tour. They're great to sleep went up, though. Well, he's had plenty of practice, he's just said, <laughs> in America with a different ball, but he is a great kick. That was a hit. Footscray by 14 points. Barnes charges in the middle and wins the hit out. Handley helps it on. Gary Hocking, been quiet after missing last week's game with that back injury. 12 possessions, not the usual output for Gary Hocking. Fitzgray wouldn't want to sit on their laurels just yet, because early in the uh, second quarter they led by 29 points, and the Cats kicked the next five goals. Handley gets clear. Tudor, Wills, in trouble. The hand pass back was a bit too slick. Croft to Costa. Out in space is Stanfield, if he can keep it in. Up at centre wing, Barry Stanfield. Go in the belts if you don't mind. The kick to the 50. Grant, it burst off his chest. Oh, he flicked it back into yeah, the throw. Geelong free. Stephen O'Reilly at half back. Geelong with 20 points down against Melbourne last week and then blitz Melbourne in the last dying minutes. So the Bulldogs haven't got it one yet. Stanfield, centre wing. Barry Stanfield, a good kick. Over the backs, Mansfield gets in a hand pass. It's knocked on. Good umpiring to let it go. Take it away by Tanner. Tanner to the wide open spaces. Simpson used his body well on McPherson. Still Simpson. All oh, that could be out in the fall. It is. Came off his boot very close to the line. Free kick Steve McPherson. Good decision by the boundary up by then. Well, McPherson's only played a quarter and a bit, and he's had 13 possessions. In front, big mark by Grigich. He's taken three or four good marks this quarter, Drew. He's been hard to topple down there. A fresh point, yes. And as they always say, put that agony short of the big blokes, do they? <laughs> well, Ilya Grigic is the second leading goal scorer for the club this year, behind Chris Grant, but today hasn't managed to score. Spent plenty of time on the bench. A couple of big marks in this last quarter. 
They lead by 14. A goal here would put them 20 points up. Away to the left. So the Cats still within three straight kicks. There's Big Ilya Grigic with the gloves. Well, 15 points. Not a huge lead in modern-day football. O'Reilly. Beautiful kick to the half-back line. Oh, big mark by Barnes. Gives it on to Riccardi. He races around the outer side of the ground. Onto the left boot. And look at that Dougie Hawkins while pushing the back. Could almost have been paid a mark. And he has not let the Bulldogs down. He's played a great game. On to Wallace. Wallace to centre wing. Up they go. It's thump clear. Barnes again. Hand pass towards the direction of Tudor. Still Barnes. Riccardi dodging, weaving. Then was held. Here's Bearstow. Bearstow to the half forward line. They need goals and they need them quickly. Here's their big chance. Gary Hocking caught, threw it away. And the umpire said exactly that. Free kick to the Bulldogs. They're more desperate at the moment, Pernod, aren't they? Good tackle by Costa. Just stuck with his man. Kim Costa have been quiet on the stats, just six possessions, but a terrific goal at the start of this last quarter. Hawkins would nearly be in the votes. He's kicked a 70 metre torpedo, helped on by Grigich. Now McGrath, great kick. Barnes, who had some time on the bench, looking pretty strong in this last quarter. The kick high, that's not good for the forwards. Down goes Predio. Ablett flicks out the hand pass to Couch. His left footer, his favourite side. And Wills takes the mark on his chest in the forward pocket. Geelong have been scoreless in this last quarter and we've been playing about 12 minutes. But all day they proved they can kick goals at the right hand end into the breeze. Wills runs around. Oh, he's missed it, I think. A behind in the near side. Well, 14 points the margin. Time clock ticking down, just over 11 minutes. Cameron brings it in to Watts. Oh, Watts is my favour, Handley. No mark. Taken by Couch. That was well played, Couch. He races clear, brings it in towards goal. It doesn't swing. And uh, another behind, so the margin, 13 points. That was the right place to kick it to Purdue in the game, but that breeze having dropped right away just didn't encourage the ball to come back toward goal at all. Oh, here's the Hawk again. Great day for him. Record-breaking day. 21 possessions, six marks to Hawkins. And here's Steve Wallace. From half-back up towards centre wing. Close to the boundary line. Mark to Stanfield. Here's kick. Grigich again. Spoiled by McGrath. Tudor. No great distance. Barnes, well trapped by West, helped up by Atkins. Stanfield gets the hand pass out to Beveridge. The Bulldogs looking all right. Grant, pushed out. No free oh. kick. Oh, a chance for Colin Hughes still. Grant will be wondering how come. That had to be a free kick, didn't it? Well, Grant doesn't seem too unhappy about it. There was a bit of staging oh. in it, but I'll see. Well, the left hand was in the back. Would you paint it, Ross? No, I'd play on. Well, it's at half forward for the Bulldogs. Gia, a goal to Footscray in this passage of play here would make it very difficult for the Cats. Hanley appealing for a free kick. There's Grigich. Can he get out to uh, Colin Nook, who almost threw that back. Beveridge. Oh, kicks to the post. Don't tell me. Dougie Hawkins is snuck down here to the forward line. He's going to have a shot for goal from 35 metres. They just well, said to himself, go back two feet. Come on, kick the goal. The crowd will oh, bring down this grandstand that we're commentating in if he kicks this. The Footscray champ, Doug Hawkins. What's he done? He's missed. Oh, gee. The Geelong supporters and players breathe a sigh of relief. The Cats still within three straight kicks. Nine and a half minutes left. O'Reilly, plenty of distance into the breeze. Handley palms down. Brewer, good running. Riccardi, speedy wingman. Down the outer side he goes. Ablett waits near the goal square. Riccardi taking it a long way. Ablett going towards goal. The kick in that direction. 
Oh, they double teamed him. It didn't reach Gary Ablett, and it's flicked off the hands and out of bounds in the forward pocket. Is that Watts who got back there to help out? That yes. was terrific yep. play by Watts. The great man, three goals, two. Well, Ablett was hoping to use his body then, but the, the fact that second man got it's there made all the difference, but so, his critics hurt his own body to body, hasn't he? That's right. Barnes flicks it over the back. A good hit out in front of goal, but taken by Croft. They're not working hard enough, Geelong. Croft kicks out of the defensive area. Tanner's got a couple to beat. Here's Simpson. Well played by Simpson onto the left boot. Brewer has to wait underneath it. A couple to beat. A loose ball. Hunter did that well. Oh, kicks it to centre wing in the mark by Beveridge. Well, you'd think if Footscray can get one here, they should win the game. In towards half forward, Grant thumped away by O'Reilly. It's a loose ball with Scott West. He races clear. In the goal. Oh, boy. Another near miss. So Geelong's still in with a chance. But they should be dead and buried. Well, they're still in with a chance, but they've kicked just two behinds in the last quarter. So if they get up and win the game, it'll be as much of a miracle as last week against Melbourne. No, they don't seem to be working hard enough, Drew, as Pete said before. That's definitely correct. Time's on their side. Eight and a half minutes to go. Kick in by Steve Hocking. Grigic has taken some marks in this last quarter, and here's another one. Four marks for the turn. Big Ilya. Centering kick, but there's no one there for Footscray. Tanner takes the mark. Concede some ground to O'Reilly. Now they can set it up from defence, the Cats. O'Reilly to Barnes. Good mark. Too much height for Danny Southern. He's got Bairstow in the middle of the ground offering a lead. Barnes goes as long as he can to half forward. Tim Darcy, the punch down, goes to McPherson. Good tackle by Darcy. Had put him off his game. Cameron, you're under heaps of pressure, Hunter. Holding it, says the umpire. Well, they really, Geelong, well, they kept at it there, Geelong, which they hadn't been doing. Here's Bairstow. He's going to kick it long. Ablett. Oh, free kick against Ablett. No, umpire called play on. Gee, what? Gets it to Hawkins. Hawkins to Atkins. And a free kick coming back for a push. And it'll go to Credi Hook. Credi Hook has been terrific, as you said earlier, Ross. Body on body. Yes. Oh, it's Watts to it's take Watson it. Is, yeah. It was against Tanner, Pete. So, Jason Watts. Oh, look at this. Unmarked Cameron, but he drops the mark. Bearstow gets it to Wills. Wills runs to 50. Kicks it high. It's floating back. And one behind only. Still a chance for Geelong. They've got seven minutes. And the margin is 14 points. Two goals to nothing in this last quarter, Footscray. Barnes, uh, Handley in front. No mark. Tanner, hurriedly booted the balls, grabbed by Atkins, floated over by McPherson. Well, the old timers McPherson and Hawkins are both going like a rock. That was thrown out by Croft. And the ball out of bounds, and we'll have a throw in. Well, the more the clock ticks down, the less chance Geelong have of pinching this game. Footscray by 14 points, but there's still time for the Cats to kick three goals and pinch the game. Centre wing. Hanley the big thumb, but more Footscray players around the ball. Cameron with a sweeping left foot kick. It's a good kick. Grigic again. Can't mark. Always a chance. Collard it. Can he grab it? Yes, he can. He's trying to run around. He gets onto the right boot. Puts it back. Will it get there? Brilliant goal, Steve Collard. And I think that's good by the Cats. It's kind of big. Three goals to the little half forward. A terrific goal and a vital time. Well, that's could very well be the seal of Pete because with Hawkins and Scotty West missing, calling it used his pace here with the big fellow going up cricket, so the spoils came down. This is where he's at his best calling it. The opportunist half forward. That's a great goal. Well, they'll celebrate long and hard into the night if the Bulldogs can win it for Dougie Hawkins. And he hasn't been a passenger himself. Cameron to Atkins. 
Rose. The floodgate's starting to open a bit now. Long to Grant. The punch down to the front. Beveridge within goal scoring distance. He might have kicked it or didn't quite make it. Grant kept the ball in. Back to Collinue. Has a chance to start it. Chris Grant there, wanted to keep the ball alive. Was it selfish in having a shot? Got it front position here. It was on the ground while Beveridge was playing around. This nearly got up there. And he just wanted to keep the ball in play here, Chris Grant. Looking for the right opportunity. Found it. The Bulldogs want it more. Just under six minutes of play left. Been a terrific quarter by Footscray. Here's Couch. They've had more numbers round the ball. Footscray. Simpson. Not sure what to do with it. Under enormous pressure. Hanley is there. Here's Scott West. Up in the air it goes. So the Grigic. Oh, he's taken another mark. Ilya Grigic. He's lifted the Bulldogs. He brings it in. He's at 50 metres. Oh, this could be the nail. A real nail in the coffin this time. Was against uh, Hanley there, Pete came across from the side. Now, see if he ran over the mark. Now, let's have a look, Hanley, yes. Chipping across. The umpire had to call play on, so he couldn't do that. So, Grigic has not kicked the goal, but boy, he's taken a number of marks. Well, five marks. He was on the bench for a long period when Wine was doing all the ruck work. And the big fella will kick from... 45 metres directly in front. He blazes away, and I think he's missed this. He has. Well, Geelong's last goal was at the five-minute mark of the third quarter, and Ilya Grigic has taken his sixth mark for the turn. No great distance on the kick and straight to the opposition to Simpson. 100 plays 73. So the Cats need five goals in five minutes. Barnes, centre of the ground. Brewer went without it. Now he's got it. Belted down by Hunter. It spills to uh, Danny Southern. Southern gets it back from Steve Wallace. Well played by Southern. McPherson, hasn't he had plenty of the ball since he's been out there? The kick to the ball with that. Steve McPherson's racked up 16 possessions in less than two quarters. Yes, and that whole half back line with Hawkins, Southern, and with Steve McPherson, who's been back there, has been very, very sound. I tell you what, that back line, I don't care what anyone says, that back line looks 100% better with Hawkins down there too. Doug Hawkins started the game on the bench. He came on at the 17-minute mark when Smith was injured. Now here's Grant to really wrap it up. great supporters he's kicked three well he's presented himself all day Drew it's what you want to afford to do the ball's been in the air he's contested hard as you see the setup coming down the ground from Southern who shares the ball around very very well good shepherd too from Atkins in the background just going out of screen Well, certainly the three goals, but I think he's done a good job up there. I'll say he has. He's battled hard. What a great kick on the left by McPherson. Now he's got McGrath for an opponent. Hundred and six to seventy-three. When it was nip and tuck, Gary Hawkins had a very quiet game. Couch receives from Bearstar. Look at the pressure they're under. Barnes up in the air to half forward. Brownless has been a disappointing player. Round the corner goes Hunter. McPherson again. Knocked on by Cameron. Billy Brownless brings it in the direction of Ablett. Credit Hawks being good. Oh, that's a mark to Darcy. Two bites of the cherry and he's marked 15 metres out from goal. Yes, he's the only player that had the momentum there, Pete, to get to the front of that pack. He came from behind and used that pace to get in front and take a good mark. There he is coming from behind. 
look at Critty up there and get in front of Ablett, exactly. which he's done all day. So Tim Darcy for his third from directly in front. He kicks and puts it through. Three goals to the former fullback. But it's all too late for the Cats because they trail by four goals, three. Yes, yeah, so he's had a difficult job up there, Darcy. Not many opportunities with those three goals, as Pete mentioned. He's done his job in a, in a way that the forward pot can only do, with limited opportunities. Twenty-seven points the margin, and just three minutes left in the game. Out of the middle goes Gary Hocking, just dispossessed, but regains it. Did pretty well then. Out of the centre square, punched down by Hunter. Tanner goes back for the Cats. He's outnumbered four to one here. He's lost it. Atkins, great kick by Atkins. Grant at the back. Front of the pack, Beveridge. Not a bad kick. Another one. Luke Beveridge gets his first. And the Bulldogs are rolling home. Yes, they are hot too, Drew. I mean, things go right for it, they go right. Just good persistence here by Footscray. Numbers around the footy, preparedness to Shepard. And the opportunist on the ground when the ball spilled free. Great performances by the Bulldogs. 112 plays, 79. And the big thump is by Griggins to Richard Osmond. Osmond's had a great battle with Mansfield. Steve Hocking and Colonel. Here's Beveridge again, the former Melbourne player. He's trying to get onto his right boot. He chips it across. He's going to find Stanfield. This has been a terrific corner by Footscray. And it's Stanfield's well lifted. Yes. And since uh, Scotty White's been off, Stanfield's gone to the ruck and Griggins to Senar Ford. They've been two very good players, Pete. Well, the first time Footscray have beaten Geelong in a long time. They've lost their previous 11 meetings. Yes, 11 meetings. Stanfield going to his third goal of the game from 52 metres. He's hooked it and one behind, but it's been... Well, they've been prepared to work a lot harder than Geelong have left it to individuals when it's been a loose ball, Ross, there. Well, but they've been prepared to man up and follow their man. Their teammates got the footy. They've been prepared to run off and create something. McGrath. Atkins. It's a push for a kick to uh, Tanner. Halfback flank. Malcolm Blight has never lost to Footscray as a player or coach, but he's going to lose today. Danny Southern pushed out handy. Free kick to the Geelong man. I reckon Doug Hawkins will be chaired off the ground and Steve McPherson with him and just goes to show you that well, a brotherhood and a bond between players can really lift them and those two players have had plenty to do with Footscray's win here today. Billy Brownless after a juggled mark. He's kicked two monster goals in this game. One at either end. That's another big kick by Billy. A leap by Wills, no mark. Rush behind. Pretty have got it through. Free kick through, I think they're paying for a uh, trip. Is it going to go to Pretty Well, Pretty has been terrific. He really, on man on man, he's had plenty of opportunities for Ablett. Man on man with Pretty and Pretty matched him in the strength stakes. Yes. Uh, Roscoe? Yes, and his determination to. Just keep Adelaide out of the game, has been admirable. Well, he's an underrated player, Steve Critio. The long players fly. There's Gary Hocking. Ablett waits down. It's a loose ball over the back with Wills, who races in the goal and puts it through for a belated goal. Andrew Wills' first goal of the match. All too late for the Cats, because look at that scoreline. 17-11, Footscray, Geelong, 13-7. Yeah, it's all too late, really, but as you say, the game's well and truly over. That man there, Gary Hopkins, found it very hard to get in the game, which is due credit to Kim Costa and Wills, who spent time on the bench. An easy one. Now, what a turnaround from the first time they met this year when the Cats battled them by nearly 100 points. Here's Scott West through the middle. 22 seconds left. Mansfield, play on. 
now. Now Paul's going to ball it up. Mansfield saying that ball was a mark because it travelled the required distance, and by saying it didn't. Then the umpire actually took pity on him by not playing holding the ball, really, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> He's going towards the crowd, and the crowd's come towards him, and he's being swapped. They went up to Gary Apple to shake his hand, which is an admirable quality of Dougie Hawkins. Well, well, du will Dougie get off the ground? That's the well, big question. What a fantastic thing, because he's done more media this week than Bronwyn Bishop. And you'd reckon he'd come out on the ground just about tired from the build-up to this game. But he's been sen sensational. He's been cheered off the ground as Ted Whitten was in his 321st. Doug Hawkins is in his 322nd to break the record. Doesn't it make it better too when they win the game like that? And he played so well, Drew. He played a terrific game. He was no passenger today, the veteran. Hawkins, seven marks, 22 possessions. Well, that's a given in votes, Drew. I thought he did very, very well. He had quality possessions, not only that, but just he used the ball very, very well. And he gave the players around him confidence, set up many attacking moves. It would have been easy for this week's events to overtake the desire to actually get the four premiership points, but they've got the double. Yes, He's got the record and they've won the game. But an emotionally draining time for him, I could well imagine. emotional time for the Footscray champ. Tremendous.